I have not changed my opinion of the Jackeries. I think they're really just great devices. These power stations are just wonderful. This is the uh, the Jackery 1000, and here is the uh, the Y connector, and you have a an Anderson connector on one side, and the two female barrel connectors. All you do is take this and plug it into the Jackery, and then you can take one or two of the solar panel barrels and connect it into here to uh, start charging the Jackery. There it goes. And uh, this one happens to be at 100%, so I'm not expecting any power to come in here, but they double up and they, uh, and they connect that way. Now, you may have uh, other solar panels and you have a Jackery. Now, this one uses the Anderson connectors. Uh, I made a, uh, a little wire. It has two alligator clips and an Anderson connector. And I can just uh, take this, connect it up, and I can hook any solar panel to this. So, um, you know, you have maximum flexibility if you make a few wires yourself. And you can buy these too, but it just took a few minutes to make. So uh, that will connect up here. This, this week, I've been here for a week, I have used the, uh, the 200 Jackery. It's getting me by just fine. I'm just working with that during the day and at night. During the day, if I'm charging something, I will uh, put this on a, uh, on a solar panel and have it outside the uh, clam shelter charging. And that's keeping it topped off while it's charging up everything else. So I'm a little battery heavy here uh, for this trip, but it's working out just fine. I'm still learning with these. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm comfortable with when I go away as far as uh, power, but I seem to have an awful lot of power. Uh, you know, a good starting system for sure is the 200 or 500 with a solar panel, 100 watt solar panel is a good the way to start. And, uh, you know, if you want to go full tilt, get two solar panels, get the 1000 or any of these, and uh, you'll have a pretty good electrical system. All your electrical needs will be met depending on what you're doing. Here's one of the uh, two Jackery panels I've got. And what I'm doing with it is I'm charging this, uh, this 200 uh, watt, uh, 220 watt uh, Jackery, but I'm also charging my laptop at the same time. So I'm getting, uh, how many watts in am I getting? It says zero right now, that's kind of odd. What's that, the controller? Oh, it's 100% charged. That's why it's at zero. The, uh, the solar panel is keeping this Jackery charged totally. I'll unplug it for a bit, let it wear down. And uh, that's charging my laptop, uh, which is a little, an energy pig, and uh, a little piggy, but I like it. Uh, and I use it quite a bit. Uh, so, look at that topped off. What that means is uh, when I go into the night, uh, when the sun goes down, Okay, there it is. It's, uh, it's charging again. It's at 36 percent, uh, 36 watts. This has gone up to 100 watts pumping in here uh, during the day uh, to keep this thing charged when it's run down. Anyway, the, the short of this is I want to go into the night with all my batteries totally charged, which makes me a happy guy and I can play all night and not worry about anything. Uh, uh, so what I've got is I've got the uh, the cable coming out of the uh, the Jackery and it uh, it's coming over to the junction box and I'm using that because it has an Anderson connector on it and I connected that to a homemade Anderson connector which goes to alligator clips and that goes into a uh, 14 amp hour controller and I have a flexible solar panel on here also so there's 10 there's 100 watts here and 100 watts here, 5 amps here, 5 amps here. And this can handle 14 amps. I wish it could handle 15, because then I could put 3 on here. But uh, they're both going into one of these. That goes into the trailer and it's charging the trailer. So I've got 1, 2, 3, 400 watts of solar panel charging the trailer. And I'm really pleased to be able to use these Jackery solar panels in the system. It's a lot more versatility for me. In one of my prior videos, I said that Jackery was a pretty good company to work with, and uh, boy, they sure proved it to me, uh, and a lot of other people. Um, what they did was, I received this Jackery 1000 in uh, maybe March. I might have even been a pre-release model, but uh, I received an email from them about two months ago, and they said that uh, they were going to swap it out for another one. And they said there was a problem with it that I'd probably never see, but they wanted it to be right. So they uh, sent me a prepaid mailer. 
I shipped it back. This weighs 22 pounds with the other goods in here. It's probably like 30 pounds. Uh, we're talking some serious money to ship. Uh, I shipped it back to them. A couple of weeks later, they shipped me a brand new one in the box with everything. Uh, I was pretty impressed to say the least. I mean, what do you think it costs to ship something like that? Two directions, packaging, uh, replacement. We're talking some serious money here. They didn't just do it for me, they did it for everybody. Uh, I talked to other people who ordered them on Amazon and theirs were, uh, were replaced also. So that's a pretty nice uh, customer support, if you ask me. I mean, a lot of these companies, you buy one of these, one of these uh, power stations from and uh, you can't get a hold of them to ask them a question, no less uh, any kind of a service. So. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm pretty impressed. I, I, I think it's worth uh, congratulating a company that does a decent job uh, on customer support. The question comes up all the time. Uh, you know, I'm out here for a week, seven days off grid. What's a good place to start for me? And uh, I'd answer that, you know, you need to do a little homework. Um, get a pencil. You need to know this, that uh, watts divided by volts equals amps. And amps times volts equals watts. With that, you know, however the appliance you're using is labeled, you can figure out how many watts. These are rated in watts. So you have to figure out how many watts you're gonna consume when you're out here. It's that I'd add a percentage to that to be, uh, to be sure that I had enough power. Now, I think a really good place to start, a sweet spot is the 500 for a lot of people's needs. So one, factor you must calculate in is what's going to be your maximum power draw. In my case, it's a waffle iron, and I love waffles. And, uh, you know, this guy is the only one in the line that will do a 1,000 watts. Uh, so that was a no-brainer for me. I want to make waffles. I bring the 1,000-watt job. This is 500 watts. It'll drive my blender no problem. Uh, but this one won't. This is 220 watts. It won't drive my blender. So if I'm bringing the blender, no problem. I bring this, and I've got, you know, plenty of power to spare. I mean, the blender draws, I think, 400 watts. And, uh, you know, you're only using that intermittently for a few minutes, uh, so it's not a big drain. But I need that surge of power to make this thing work. So I, uh, I bring, you know, the adequate power supply. Um, the 220 pretty good. Uh, you know, I like the 162, so I like them all. But uh, this guy uh, will power my fan overnight. Now, I really like that. I have a nice electric fan, and it powers it overnight. It's not a problem. Uh, it's just, uh, and it's pretty small. It's easy for me to take along. Um, the other thing you want to think about is, well, how long does it take to recharge these? You know, they can take a while. Uh, the 500 can take about uh, eight hours or so with a single solar panel. Uh, uh, they all take about eight hours. Uh, you know, they throttle down how much watts they'll accept. Um, so, but they all, you know, I don't draw them down to dead. Usually I've got plenty of power and I'm just topping them off in the morning. I use them overnight to edit videos, which is very power consuming. Uh, last night I was editing videos for four hours and this, uh, this 500, it, uh, I drained it down to about 70%. So I used about 30% of it. Uh, I stuck it out in the sun for a couple of hours, recharged up, no problem. You know, you can get yourself a, a small phone battery, right? Uh, you know, a little USB battery, and you can uh, get it with equal power to this, and it fits in the palm of your hand. Well, this one has some other features. It has a 12-volt output, which is very good. It has a USB, and it has a, an AC uh, inverter. So if you pile all that onto your little phone brick, you're going to have something that's about the same size, in my opinion. So, uh, but they're pretty good. You know, I, I, I really enjoy these. They've changed the quality of my life out here. They've improved, they've improved the quality of my life out here camping. Uh, you know, I have, just have all the electricity that I need. Now, I don't take all these on every trip. Uh, I wanted to bring them here because I wanted to show them to you. And uh, I'll typically take, you know, the 500 and maybe the 220. It's a good place to start, you know, unless I have a really big power draw, then I'll take the 1,000. Uh, I can uh, do, you know, mix and match. When you're purchasing, you may want to consider that, are you better off with two 500s or one 1,000? Two 500s, you can use them for two things, obviously, or more things, and you can uh, maybe have one out in the sun recharging while you're inside doing something else using it. Um, there's no right or wrong on this. You just get what's best for you. Overall, pretty happy with them, pretty happy with the support. Uh, no complaints. Uh, I have other 
power stations that I haven't shown you because I don't think they're good. I have other equipment that I have shown you that I don't think they're good, so I, don't, I, don't, I only show you what I'm going to use and what's actually good. I want people to buy the right equipment the first time. I don't want somebody to buy the wrong equipment because uh, that costs a lot of money. I've done it. I've been there, so I, I don't mind sharing stuff that I use. My trailer has power. My trailer has a 120 amp hour battery in it. Now that's uh, 60 amps of that are usable. Because lead acid battery, you can't draw them down to zero. These you can draw down to zero. This guy, this 1000, it's equal to about double the power of what's in the trailer. And it weighs 22 pounds. So the battery in the trailer weighs 70 pounds. So it's, uh, uh, you know, you might say, why not just power the trailer with this? Well, I feel more comfortable with that powering a trailer. That can go down to sub-zero weather and the battery will still output power. These can only output power down to about, uh, I think 16 degrees, they told me. Uh, and you can't charge them when it's colder than 30 degrees or 32 degrees, cold and freezing. Now, it's not a problem for me. In the trailer, I have heat. And even in the dead of winter, I can, uh, I can warm these things up and get them so they'll charge and, uh, and, and be functional. But uh, you may want to factor that in. Lithium ion is great. But uh, lead acid, good old lead acid, which has been here from the start of batteries, is still uh, got its uses.